If I stood in front of a fire hose and you fired it straight at my head, how much water would I drink? How much water would I be able to drink? Let me ask you again. If I stand in front of a fire hose, you fire that fire hose at me, how much water would I be able to drink? My answer, probably not much at all. In fact, probably nothing. And that is the theme of today's show. Welcome to JT in the Raw, where I chew the thin on business, and my job is to help you become better and think and do different in your business. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Marissa. Good morning, Chantel. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Eugene. My job today is going to give you three tips to closing more sales. Good evening, Neil. How are you over there in the UK? G'day, Susan. G'day, Stiff. Chris Stevenson. How are you? Mike James. Goodness gracious, is this your first JT in the Raw, Mike? How are you? So I'm going to give you three tips today on how to close more sales that are not rocket science, but I'm telling you, but I'm telling you, I went through this process yesterday and I learned so much about selling when you don't know shit about a product. Hey, Dr. Steve Jensen, how are you? All right, first up, got some shout outs. Just a couple of shout outs this morning. First one is, got a huge shout out to someone who was a member of my gym in oh, oh many, many, many moons ago. Susan, who now works for Nestle, and she got me this week, we had a chat this week, and I'm gonna to speak to her team of sales reps next Thursday about getting their personal shit together. I'm not even going in to talk to them about how to sell, I'm going in to talk to them about how to perform better in the workplace. So I'm pumped up to do that, and I'm so appreciative, Susan, for reaching out, and that is a direct result of her watching JT in the Raw. So when people say, well, what's the advantage of doing this show? That is the advantage of doing the show, that I'm getting the opportunity to go and work with Susan, who has just come online. Good morning, Susan. I was just giving you a shout out and thanking you for the opportunity to work with your team next week. Shout out number two goes to Steve Jensen, who is also on the line this morning. Had a great chat with Steve this week about doing some collaboration in the fitness industry. Uh, we're going to be working really well together, trying to help each other's businesses, but also help uh, fitness businesses improve the way they do things from a sales perspective and also from a leadership and management perspective. So I'm pumped up to be able to work with uh, Steve in a collaborative uh, form that we you'll see roll out over the next month, uh, probably for the next 12 months even. G'day, Matty Wright. Congratulations on your new job. Helen Suvlaki, good morning. How are you? Matt Wright, yes, I am a stud. Yes, you're kidding. Mate, you must have had a couple of scotches. Good morning, Alyssa, over there in New Zealand. Shout out number three this week goes to my Facebook friends. Last Sunday, I did the um, uh, uh, Sydney Half Marathon. And, um, oh, it was a horrible event. No, it was, wasn't too bad at all. Morning, JP Richard over there in the in the US. It wasn't bad, but uh, what, I, what I realized is when I posted on Facebook afterwards, I said I learned five things from running this event. Now, if any of these tickle your funny bone, I want you to hit the emoticon of that smiley face. Here are the five things that I learned during a fun run. Number one is I should stop pretending to be Kenyan and should not run long distances any further or try to run faster. Number two, number two thing I learned, that the girl that ran behind me for three kilometers was not perving on my butt, but was in fact slipstreaming me because with 200 meters to go, she sprinted past me. Now that's not on, is it? That's not fair. Shattered my dreams. If you find that one funny, give me a, give me a funny face. Um, number three, I learned that one toilet stop before a fun run is not enough. Number four, I was surprised, in fact, completely blown away, how many people in our society have been touched by cancer. The number of people that were running, that were running with shirts, uh, sharing um, their love for people that have been touched by cancer completely blew me away. That was mind boggling. And number five, this is not a smiley face one. This is a love heart one. 
I realized by nine o'clock on Sunday morning, I had done more exercise than 75% of the Australian population, if not 75% of the world population, will do in a week, in a month, and for some people, even in a year. Can you believe that? Two hours of working out is more exercise than 75% of the Australian public will do in a month, in a week, and for some, even a year. That is a sad fact, but a true fact. That is a sad fact, but a true fact. So my message at the end of that Facebook post was this. Everyone can move. You don't have to go to a gym. You just have to walk. You just have to move more and move often in order to improve your health. That's the message that I'm trying to create. That's what I want people to do. Move more, move often, don't care what you do. Just see moving as a gift, not a chore. And I want to thank everybody that liked that post last week. Great shout out. Morning, Shane Casey. Shane, great to have you on. And my final shout out, my fourth shout out today, actually goes to people like Shane Casey. And that's this. The whole Anytime Fitness uh, franchise here in Australia. I've got a massive shout out to you guys who begin this afternoon, I think it's three o'clock this afternoon, um, are doing a treadmill challenge, a 24 hour treadmill challenge. Why are they doing this? They want to raise funds for suicide prevention. Some stats, 3,000 Australians die as a result of suicide every year. That's one death every three hours. 75% of those suicides are in men. It is the biggest killer of Australians aged 15 to 44. And I want to shout out to all the members of Anytime Fitness and all the Anytime Fitness franchisees who are running this treadmill challenge. I think it's a great cause and I would encourage all the members of Anytime to jump on board. And if you're a member of the general public, why don't you see if you can just go into an Anytime Fitness, even if you're a member of another club, just go in, jump on a treadmill for an hour and raise some funds for this very important cause. So kudos to uh, Anytime Fitness for raising um, money, hoping to raise, I think, half a million dollars over the next 24 hours. Uh, well done, guys. All right. Now, please, I am no sales expert. There are experts that are watching today. Steve Jensen is here. He is a sales expert. I am not a sales expert, so I'm not here to tell you how to sell. But here's what I do want to say. Yesterday, I went through four sales pitches for a, uh, uh, someone to design a website for my mum's real estate business. Four sales pitches. Shane, I really do, um, I really mean that for you guys. I hope you're extremely successful over the next 24 hours. Um, and I expect you, Shane, to be on the treadmill for the full 24 hours. I know how fit you are. So I went through four pitches. Now, I assume everybody can sell. I assume that, that this, these companies pay huge amounts of money for their salespeople to learn how to sell. And here's what I picked up. Three basic tips. Number one. The first person that I spoke to asked about my business. He asked really great questions about the business, but he never asked what I wanted in a website or what I needed. The result of that sales presentation was, I really liked him, I thought he was great, I thought he had great rapport. But what I realized when I had further presentations, I understood that I had no CRM. I had, he was going to design me a brand new website, but the key component to this new website was the CRM that sat in the background. He never identified that component of what I need in the business. So he didn't understand what I wanted, what I wanted from the website. Dope. Number two presentation and number three presentation and number four presentation. I was completely overwhelmed with the features of the product. Okay, so they didn't really, any of these presentations, they didn't really find out about my business or what I was looking for in a website. What they went straight into was telling me all the features about their product. 
It was like a freaking fire hose of features at me. Morning, Dylan McGregor. How are you? Hope you're doing well down there in Victoria. It was like a fire hose. He was firing them at me. In fact, I had to stop one sales pitch and I said, okay, please stop, Stuart. I am feeling completely overwhelmed with all these features. I had to stop a second presentation and say, this is, this is great, but only 15% of the business is around selling. 85% of the business is around property management. So the features you're showing me are not relevant. Now these people could have worked out exactly how to pitch if they asked the questions, if they listened to what I said, if, oh, honestly, I was overwhelmed. The result of being overwhelmed was when he then got to the punch, got to the point where he was trying to close me for a sale, I said, I need to think about it. Why did I need to think about it? Because I was overwhelmed. There was too much information and I needed to think about it. Does that happen in your business? Look over my shoulder. There is someone moving more and moving often. Don't care what he's doing. He is making himself healthier. Yes, love that. Number three, on the fourth presentation, what I understood was the person was not listening to me. They didn't listen to what I need. So by halfway through the presentation, I completely disengaged. She was doing a presentation for me online. So she had all these slides, bells and whistles, but she hadn't listened to what I needed or what I wanted, so I disengaged. I was back surfing Facebook, I was back um, checking out my emails, and I was just listening, but I wasn't really listening because she didn't listen to me. Look, here's the key. We're all salespeople. We're all selling something in life. So these three tips are relevant for whether we're actually selling a tangible good, an intangible good, or even just getting our kid to have dinner after the bath or the bath before dinner, whatever we're trying to sell. Here are our three tips. Firstly, you must... You must truly, deeply understand my needs. You must truly, deeply understand my needs. Morning, Mick Cunico, how are you over there at Fitness First? Morning, Tom Ferrari, how are you, sir? You must deeply, deeply, truly understand my needs. What's William Kent saying? Sales is about the, what the person wants, needs, and desires. No open-end questions. Thanks, Mr. Kent. Great to have you on board this morning. So number one tip, you must truly deeply understand my needs. That means you gotta ask questions. It means you gotta ask a shitload of questions to find out exactly what I'm looking for. Exactly what I'm looking for. That is critical. Morning, Alicia. I'll try to tone it down. Jordan Cowan, another Anytime Fitness franchisee who is gonna be walking for 24 hours on the treadmill challenge. Good to have you on board this morning, mate. Number two, no matter what you're selling, just show me the freaking features that are relevant to me. If you show me any features, they have to be relevant to me. Show me shit that doesn't mean anything to me and that's gonna bring up objections or I'm gonna disengage, or I'm going to disengage. Steve Jensen, the master of sales says, qualification is 80 to 90% of the sale. Qualification. That's a whole nother topic. I'm leaving that for you, Dr. J. Just show me the features that are relevant to me. So if you've listened to what I have said, then you'll know what to show me. And that's point number three. My tip number three is listen, is listen, is listen. As the salesperson, as the person that's trying to get me started on a program, trying to sell me your product, or trying to get your kid to have a bath before dinner, you need to listen to what they are saying. You need to stay engaged in the conversation. And for me, that is often the hardest part of the sales process, because you want to move on, you want to start telling everybody about how fucking good your product is, but they don't give a shit about how good your product is until they know that you know what they're looking for. And that is the lesson, ladies and gentlemen. 
You need to listen, 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 and then shape that presentation around what you truly, deeply understand my needs are. If this makes sense, give me a love heart right now. Hit me up with a love heart. Hit me up with a love heart. Hit me up with a love heart. Seriously, guys. Seriously. Hey, Colin Walker, great point. Two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. This is the key. I don't care what you're selling. I don't care what you're selling. You need to truly, deeply understand my needs. You need to show just the features that are relevant to me. Don't show me anything else. Just show me the features that are relevant to me because you have listened, listened, listened to what I have said. When you have that as a foundation, then you can do other shit around sales. Then you can call Steve Jensen in and Steve can help you close more sales when it comes back to doing stuff. But for me, these are the three key parameters. Listen, listen, listen. Truly understand what I'm looking for and then only show me the features that are gonna help me. Which one of these are relevant to you? One, two, or three. What can you improve? One, two, or three. What can you improve? One, two, or three. What can you improve? One, two, or three. Is it truly understanding your customer? Is it only showing them the features that are relevant to them? Or is it listening and staying engaged to that listening? That is my question for you, ladies and gentlemen. That is my question for you. Hey, did you enjoy that? JT in the Raw, show 97 today. If you got any value out of those three sales tips, I would beg you to share the show with anybody. Just tag them in the comments below. Just tag them in the comments below. They'll get a little message up there on Facebook and they can watch the show and hopefully we can help them improve their sales process as well. Yes, Angus Campbell, show them the benefits. Yeah, don't show me the features. Show it's gonna, how it's gonna help my business, how it's gonna help me, how it's gonna improve my structure or my life or whatever. What's happening this week for me? What's going on? What is going on this week? All right, here it is. I am preparing for my industry leaders round table meetings. I've got a bucket load coming up in the month of June. So this week I'm preparing my education and my agendas. So it's a pretty big week of prep, including next Friday, I actually have my New South Wales personal trainers, independent uh, personal trainers, industry leaders round table. That's gonna be coming next Friday. So I'm gonna be doing my raw just before that meeting. I'm gonna be coming to you live from Springwood. I think I'm gonna be training at uh, Anytime Fitness Blacksland next Friday. I've been invited up there by Owen as a guest to try out his club. So I'm gonna be working out in his club and having a bit of a look at that. So uh, that's where I'm gonna be coming from you live. Also, also we're gonna start pushing out there. I've got this great new concept. It's called Coffee with JT, hashtag Coffee with JT. I got six spots available, uh, three in Melbourne, uh, three in, uh, two in, six in Melbourne and two in Frio, in Fremantle coming up. Um, if you'd like to have coffee with me, Put coffee in the comments below if you're from Victoria. Coffee in the comments below if you're from Western Australia. Coffee in the comments below. I'll send you the link and you can have coffee with me. Chris Stevenson, I won't be at IDEA, mate. I'll see you in Japan. I won't be at IDEA in 34 days. Unfortunately, I won't. My colleague from the Fitness, Indus from the Fitness Business Podcast will be, but I won't be. So, if you want to grab a coffee with me, put coffee in the comments below and I will happily have one with you. Um, when am I doing New South Wales, Kelly? I'm gonna be doing Sydney in July and I'm gonna come to Newcastle and do coffee in Newcastle uh, in August. Definitely in August I'm gonna be in Newcastle for anyone up there who wants to grab a coffee with me. Okay, that's it. Yes, Paul Bedford, we will be in Japan together. Looking forward to that, can't wait. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of JT in the Raw, show 97. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Hope you got some value out of this. Okay, quote of the week. Quote of the week is this. To sell more, ask me. Listen to me, show me. To ask more, sorry, to sell more, ask me, listen to me, show me. That is my quote of the week. I hope that is relevant for you. I hope that rings some bells for you. 
My job is just simply to get you to think and do different in whatever business you're in. Susan, I'll catch you next Thursday. Everybody else on live, I will catch you next Friday, coming to you live from Springwood. All the best to all those anytime people. But of course, remember, quote of the week, to sell more, ask me, listen to me, show me. Thanks for tuning in to JT and the Raw, show 97. Appreciate all the comments. Remember, share the show down below in the comments by tagging anybody. And I'll catch you on the flip side.